Cuckoo feels a bit old school in the way that it seems like a kind of outlandish, crazy horror movie idea that someone would have conjured up maybe in the 80s and would have fit right in with that time period. Something also very interesting about Cuckoo that I noticed is that the Rotten Tomatoes score for Cuckoo was out months and months and months before the movie was. And sometimes you'll get that if it's like a festival run or something like that. The theatrical release might not be till later, but the Rotten Tomato score will drop early. But typically, I feel like I've never seen it drop so early before a theatrical release and then like fluctuated so much. There were reviews coming in and out. It's like the tomato score was up and down, up and down, and then eventually settling you know, months later to like, I think a 76% certified hole as what it's at right now. So let's kick things off with the positives, things that I did enjoy about Cuckoo. And I didn't really know anything about this director going in, but I looked at his other film that he directed. And while I haven't seen it, it looks like one of those kind of mind trip out there type horror films. So I sort of expected that going in to Cuckoo with the name as well as the trailer. And you definitely get about get a lot of that in this. However, I actually think that it was easier to follow and not quite as mind trippy as I had anticipated. So that's a positive. There are definitely some negatives with some threads that don't quite go, don't quite tie together and don't go places. But overall, I do think it was actually not as hard to follow or as crazy as I kind of anticipated going into this movie. I do think that Cuckoo is shot very well. It is clearly shot with a very specific style and I really enjoyed it. As mentioning the style, I really enjoyed the color palette in Cuckoo. It really stands out. It's a very specific and again this kind of ties into the like I was talking about the 80s. There's like some puke green in here but like a really interesting type green that's cast all over with some like yellows and very interesting saturation of colors and styles here. Really, really cool choices that in the set design and like a pink house and these really like muted bright colors, which I think really do a good job at sort of putting you in this tone of this sort of throwback 80s kind of wild horror movie story. It definitely works uh, very well here. I really enjoyed Hunter Schaefer's performance in this. I really, really dug like the haircut that she had in this film and like with the track jacket. Felt very like 90s rebellious teenager. I loved it. It was super cool. Headphones on, laying on the bed playing bass. Really, really cool aspects to her character. Great performance for the most part. There are some pieces and some elements there where I was a little bit taken out of it and I couldn't quite tell if it was a bad performance or bad editing or a creative choice from the director. But there are some moments there where, which I'll get into in my negatives in a second probably if I don't forget, but it's there's just some pieces where I'm like, I don't know if I necessarily want to blame her. For the most part, she's pretty good through this film. She carries a lot of weight. And like I said, I love the way she played this like rebellious teenager who doesn't know what she's doing with her life and trying to unsolve or solve this like mystery that's going on. She's got some great lines in there where she's like the voice of reason when this crazy stuff is happening and she kind of almost looks at the camera and is like, does that make any kind of sense? There's one in line in particular that's great in this film. There are some cool camera tricks in here that they do when the characters are, without giving too much away, going into like kind of this mind trip aspect of the film and I do think that they do a really good job with those camera tricks and selling like this uh, sort of timepiece that's going on and what's happening with them. I think it looks really cool. It's interesting to watch. Part of them looked like really, really cool when the background's all shaky. We've seen it before, but I think that they used it really well in combination with some good sound design and some music. The music to me didn't really stand out as anything crazy, but it worked very well for what it needed to be. Nothing that like was super duper memorable, but the sound design, particularly a piece of the movie where there's a, a character or something, again, not trying to give too much away, that has a specific sound. And I think they do a good job with that. Overall, I did enjoy this kind of, like I said, throwback horror story that they came up with. And 
Yeah, I think it's a cool, unique idea. This is a new, sort of fresh, original horror film idea. So, I mean, you've got to give it props for that. Whether it sticks the landing or not, I appreciate them coming up with something original. Uh, and, you know, of course, I do feel like this is a modern day thing where we kind of come up with these original ideas, but instead of making them cohesive, we lean into weird. You know, you kind of like throw something at the wall and you're like, hey, that's unique. How can we make that work? Well, let's make it weird. But again, that being said, I do think it is original. It's fresh. And I, I personally enjoy like the throwback element of it. It almost doesn't need to make entirely like complete sense because it feels kind of like old school horror films that sometimes you they don't these 80s horror films didn't really make sense and to elaborate on that by make sense i don't necessarily mean like the plot or the story doesn't make sense like you don't know what the heck is going on and there's a bunch of stuff that just is keeps you completely lost but i mean like once you find out what's going on in the film the villain and the creature it doesn't necessarily like tie in with reality and that's okay in this film. The last positive is that there are a few pretty decent scares in here. This is not a movie that's like creepy bumps in the nights or anything like that. It's not necessarily trying to scare you, but there are some moments here that work pretty well. Some jump scares that I feel are earned for the most part that work pretty well also. That leads me into my negatives and things I didn't really like about Cuckoo. And unfortunately, well, I feel like the ingredients here are all there to make a pretty decent horror film. Nothing just really grabbed me. I, I kind of was in the theater, and I, I mentioned this in my trap review a little bit. I felt this way a lot recently in theaters, just kind of sitting there being like, it's not bad, but I'm watch checking my watch. I'm kind of like thinking, okay, what's going to come next? Where is this going to go? Okay, this is going to happen, or this is going to happen. And then it does, and you're kind of like, okay, cool. You know, it's not that it's overtly a bad film, and there's just so much of that here in 2024, but it just doesn't hook me. There's no scenes that really pull me in, no character moments that really suck me in or make me care about what's going on. There's not enough going on with the scares that can carry the film. There's not a cool enough creature that I can just turn my brain off and enjoy a bunch of kills or anything like that. Just nothing to really grab onto and enjoy the film. I, I feel, again, left just continually aware of the fact that I'm in the theater watching a movie. And as I mentioned, as I said, it's not that the movie's bad. But when you're sitting there and you're kind of thinking to yourself and you're constantly reminded, hey, I'm in a theater. What do I have to do after this? You know, I got to go come record a video. Okay, I'm going to eat dinner. The movie is unfortunately just not doing its job at pulling you in and keeping you entertained. I also just really don't like Dan Stevens in here. I thought he was fantastic in The Guest. Loved him in that. I pretty much have not liked him since. I did not like him in Abigail. I don't like him in here. I know some people have been saying, like I saw some of you say like, hey yeah, his German accent and like his over the top character. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like he could have been played by anybody and it would have been less distracting. I'm all for like a character actor, especially in a movie like this where maybe they're going for a little bit over the top or a little ridiculous. And like, sure, I can see maybe why you cast him, but I don't, to me, it just is more distracting than it benefits the movie. He's not so outlandish that it's like, yeah, he's really hamming it up, but he's also not really good. He's somewhere in the middle where I'm very aware it's Dan Stevens and is just not doing anything. In fact, as I said, it's more than anything just distracting. Speaking of distracting, there are lots of little pieces here and there, lots of little story elements that while kind of can be explained by themselves, you can piece things together. They aren't necessarily explained. They're not tied together. They're not referenced back to. There are lots of little pieces of character development, lots of little storylines that don't really do anything for the film. They don't really make you care about the character enough. They don't move the plot forward. Then they also don't really explain what's going on. And 
I've said this before, I'll say it again. You don't necessarily need to explain your entire film to me. That's fine. I'm fine not having everything just told to me. But you have to like have it mean something. You know, if there's a scene and a bit of character dialogue, can it like mean something? Can it go somewhere? Or is it supposed to mean something? Or is it like just there for some random reason or just to move the pace along? And, you know, there's a lot of that in this movie. While it's not so distracting as maybe some other films, there's just pieces where you're kind of like, it's not necessarily that it doesn't fit, but does it need to be there? Why, like, why is that there? Does it help the movie? Or does it, more than anything, just kind of distract from what you're trying to tell? I feel like Cuckoo suffers the fate of actually playing it a little too safe. This is the type of movie that is trying to be a little wild and out there but so it doesn't it doesn't really fit the audience who wants like your standard horror thriller but it's not out there enough i actually feel like cuckoo could have gone a little more crazy or really leaned into certain aspects more and really really like hammered home that idea of this like throwback sort of old school 80s monster type ish horror film and again i might be giving you a bad depiction of what this film is by saying 80s monster horror it's not like 80s cheese like gore effects monster movies again more in like the story elements where you kind of got this like horror film and you don't exactly know what's going on and then it's this reveal of this kind of like wild thing that you're like oh you made some stuff up and and that's what I mean when I keep referencing that. It feels that way. And I, again, I actually feel like they should have gone bigger. You know, they really should have had more of the aspects that I do think work in here that are a little bit wild and crazy. The mind bending aspects, they should have leaned into them more. Ultimately, I just kind of came out of Cuckoo thinking, yeah, that was a movie. It was all right. You know, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. And then, you know, it sucks because I honestly, it's sometimes it's better if it were to be bad because then it would have at least gone for it or it would land somewhere. Unfortunately, in my mind, this is kind of just forgettable. I'm going to write it off and probably not even think about it again for a long time. I gave this one two and a half stars out of five on Letterboxd. You can follow me at the link down below if you are interested in seeing some of my ratings and some of my lists and rankings. I have a 2024 films that I've seen list ranking in there. You can go check it out. There's horror and non-horror. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought of Cuckoo down below and take care. I'm money scared. I'm a big bad wolf. Oh, I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in cap star, everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking with it.